previously on Zool Destinies. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just making fun of my usual voice there. Um, it's time for previous pre 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 previously means testimony. <laughs> just you know. so we just figured out in the last episode that we this guy very well could have done the thing because he wasn't in his seat during the time when the murder took place, and his speech was pre-recorded. And he pre-recorded it, trying to make it look like he was there. He was actually somewhere else. Uh, he's, he's talking about something here, I forget what he said he was going to talk about, but we'll figure that out, I guess. The defendant came to me with what she said was very important, and by necessity, secret. She asked me to pre-record my speech, and come to the audio room during the mock trial. Juniper confessed to the murder and asked that I get her declared innocent in court. What an asshole. She also said I'd become an accomplice after losing my alibi due to the pre-record. But when I said I would protect Juniper, I meant it, because it's the humane thing to do. Uh... <laughs> oh my, so you're saying the defendant threatened you? This has to be a lie. I mean, everything about it lines up too perfectly to be true. On this most consequential of occasions, let me be completely frank with you. Juniper has truly taken to heart my teaching that states the end justifies the means. I don't believe you. I don't believe a damn bit word of it. But when she asked me to defend her, she said I must also prove her two friends innocent. Her two friends? The witnesses? Correct. Hugh O'Connor and Robin Newman. I was to ensure all three walked free. All three were to achieve their dream. That was the result Juniper was seeking. And she was even willing to threaten me, her own professor, to that end. Well, maybe the ends justified her means, I don't know. So, you no doubt had high praise for, your, or for her ruthless tactics. Only the best. Yes, well, that is why I vowed to vigorously defend her despite her threatening me. Boy, you're just a real ray of sunshine, aren't you? There was a time when lawyers merely sought the truth if they wished for victory in court. But alas, those days are over. Now, in the defense of justice, order, and all that is good, the end justifies the means. Damn, I am so sick of hearing that phrase! Ha <laughs> ha! Though it truly really grieves me, so I must tell you this. Forsake the truth if it's victory you seek. Steal yourself for this new courtroom reality. That does it. He's gonna regret dragging those dismal, depressing ideas in here. Since he's already surrendered to the Dark Age of the Law, it's up to me to fight it. Why so silent, Sykestono? Something the matter? No, my brain's on fire right now. D this, this is a court of law. There's no place for long-winded talks about idealistic principles. Holy bulls! Holy bulls on parade! That's why I'm gonna let the evidence do the talking. Let's not get carried away now, Miss Sykes. It will not do to have you attempting to discredit my doctrine. Do not force me to rectify this situation. I will wreck anything... Now go ahead and rectify it. Only if I lose and you win, that is. Anyway... Oh, I have this awful feeling that this case is only part of something bigger, and I think I said the same thing in Investigations 2 at some point. But, like, ugh, holy crap. The defendant came to me with what she said was very important and by necessity secret. We're gonna scour this one from one end to the other. I doubt our client would have come to you with something like that. You have a point there? If only Professor Court had been alive, I suspect Juniper would have gone to her instead. So, our client came to talk to you after Professor Court was dead. Let's go through this step by step, shall we? First, Juniper came to me that day. Okay. She asked me to pre record my speech and come to the audio room during the mock trial. So, when was this? Like, the day before the mock trial? Are you suggesting we go home? Are you suggesting this is our client who told her to fake an alibi? You have every reason to be surprised. I too was shocked when she told me that. Simply put, Juniper has a secret that she wished to protect that badly. Are you kidding me? That lie couldn't be further from the truth. The problem is, how am I going to expose it? Uh, <laughs> it was an earnest request from an outstanding student. How could I possibly have refused? 
Juniper confessed to the murder and asked that I get her declared innocent from the court. Alrighty then. Did you consider that a threat? Yes, but it's now you to whom she has passed her demands on to. Miss Sykes, you must realize that you too are being used by Juniper. What? No! Juniper is my friend, I don't know what she is to you, but... Your Honor, I ask that you too do not let her feign weakness and innocence fool you. Juniper Woods is quite clever and extremely tough. And perhaps most important of all, she is a man. No, she's a fervent follower of my teaching. Objection! Bull hockey! Your Honor, <laughs> the witness's testimony is nothing but an attack on our client's character. Very well, objection sustained. So be it, nevertheless, the fact that she threatened me is immutable. Well, we ain't got nothing to prove that yet, why don't you throw some evidence out here and let's see. She also said I'd become an accomplice after losing my alibi due to the pre-recording. A lot of verbiage there. <laughs> How could you overlook such a threat? As a teacher, it's your duty to discipline students. Yes, well, perhaps I do have some serious reflection to do on this matter. I suppose it was just wishful thinking on my part. I wanted to believe that. I wanted to believe that Juniper hadn't actually committed murder, and that she hadn't meant to threaten me. Really? Please do explain. Long had I waited for a student who would embody my teachings. Does a witness realize what he is saying? <laughs> Surely you must see the true meaning in my words. I am merely staying true to what I teach, and my methods are but a reflection of the times. Wow, his way of thinking is really warped. I haven't heard any inconsistencies yet. I wouldn't be so sure. Really? The more he tries to avoid logical inconsistencies in his testimony, the more they come busting out at the seams, you know? The more likely we'll see inconsistencies between his actions and words. It is a dark age in which we live, and there's much I would like to say on the matter. I noticed that there's no we there, <laughs> but... And so... But when I said I would protect Juniper, I meant it, because it's the humane thing. Humane my ass. You were trying to protect our client. Yeah, right. He'll say anything to pin the blame on Juni. What a frightful look. I would ask that you not glare at me so. I've nothing but admiration for how Juniper was willing to go as far as to threaten me. That is why I'm protecting her by any means possible. She's been a model student. Why are you trying to pin the blame on her? How am I going to show that what he's saying isn't what he's really thinking? You cannot possibly overturn my claims. <laughs> oh, dude, you need to go back to grammar school. So isn't it about time you admitted defeat? After all, if my unassailable logic is not truth, then what is? Dude, you're crazy! Everybody in this case has been crazy! I mean, sure, some of it's kind of worked out, but man, there is no going back for this guy. He's... His ship has sailed, and there's nothing left of the land. If he thinks I'm going to give in to his pack of lies, he's got another thing coming. I'm going to find a hole in his story if it's the last thing I do. Even though he's rotten to the core, he's a total pro. I mean, all that made perfect sense. Yeah, but you can't believe a word he says. He's making this up as he goes along. He'll trip upon his own words yet. Time to see how consistently the professor's testimony matches up with the actual actions. Well, they keep talking about his actions, so... We're gonna have to present something here, we're gonna have to find something, and I... Didn't see a thing, like, I have no clue whatsoever here. The defendant came to me with what she said was very important by necessity secret. Well, it might be smarter to look at the evidence first and then go through the statements. Uh, where's my stylus? Jeez, I'm sitting here playing with my finger. The TMI, I know. Photo of the art room while preparations are being made. We used that a number of times. Identified as a fake. Professor Means used Hugh to pass it on to the police. Okay, probably, I mean, the tape recorder, that's close. Anything that addresses what he actually does. Well, you know what? Does he even know that we know about that? Because it was Hugh who told us about it. Hang on. Like, either the first one or maybe the last one. Because maybe, like, what he's talking about here is the tape recorder. But, well, that's what contradicts it then. You know, he gave him the tape recorder because he wanted to frame her. Or so it would seem. 
So let me get this straight. You were trying to help Miss Woods? <laughs> That's nothing more than a ball-faced lie. No offense, Your Honor. <laughs> Such definition is my character and your hair follicles, Your Honor. It is an outrage. Hmm, Sykes will clarify her statement, but leave my hair follicles out of it this time. Okay, yeah, of course, Your Honor. Now, please take a look at this. The witness gave this tape to Mr. O'Connor, and he slyly whispered, take this to the police and tell them you found it. There was no whispering, slyly or otherwise involved. I simply did that out of kindness. Objection. Hmm. The tape contained our client's voice. In short, it is incredibly damaging evidence. Why would it even exist if the witness wasn't trying to pin the murder on our client? Yeah. They say the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Not yours. <laughs> oh, man. You never had good intentions. Only lies to protect yourself with while blaming another. To protect yourself with while blaming another. You, Professor, are the embodiment of the Dark Age of the Law. Wow. That's gotta be him, right? Yep. Why, you little... <laughs> that Donald Duck again. You dare call my teachings and methods lies. Uh-oh. Oh, 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 dear. What is... What the... Did he just fold his hair? What?! Throw his finger at me? No, he threw chalk. Oh wow. These animations, I'm telling you. Eyes and ears up here, everyone. Home room is now in session. <laughs> we will begin with roll call, Athena Sykes. Uh huh? Oh, here? Apollo Justice. I'm fine. Or I mean here. <laughs> Fool! The proper response is here without any extraneous information. Oh man, this guy, this is a chalk assault. Like, he's gonna be taken down to the board chalk. Next, Your Honor? Here. <laughs> C-Class, that's the proper way to answer. Simon Blackwill. Aki. I said Simon Blackwill. Are you here or not? Wow. There's always one, isn't there? Well, then I'll just mark you absent. Now, get out of my class this incident. Get out? Very well, if that is your wish. Who am I to defy my homeroom teacher? <laughs> that really is his homeroom teacher. Is that such a good idea? Prosecutor Blackwell is free of his shackles. Oh, he's not really. He is not. Ha <laughs> ha! Just so happens I was a member of my high school's disciplinarian committee. Just ran out of breath on that sentence. But is that really so shocking? Hm. Constabulary lapdog to teach his pet. What a malleable mutt you are, fool bright. Oh man. Oh man, Jordan versus Peel over here. <laughs> Very good, Bobby. He just earned a gold star and a promotion to head disciplinarian. Alright. Class is now in session. What is this? Ah, uh, what is he doing? The <laughs> stomach ache. Feeling that stomach ache. Pay attention, I am not the killer. Juniper is. This will be on the next test, so you had better be listening. He just got really cool. <laughs> but Professor, you created the phony tape to pin the blame on Juniper. Plus, you were the only one who could have moved the body during the mock trial. Who cares about the truth? I didn't do it. Please note I was not at school. Huh? Athena, you disappointed me so, to think you would label me a murderer. Now pay attention. 
the murder occurred on the 23rd between 6 and 8 p.m. But I was already at home by that time, so how could I have been involved with this crime? Huh? Professor Means, can you really prove you had already gone home by that time? Can you prove that I was still at school? I don't know, can I? I don't think I can. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> so you admit it? Well, you just earned extra credit for your honesty. Well, that's the whole point here. I'm being honest, and you're not. You just want to fabricate truths, and then you're trying to tell me that I'm good for being honest? Like, that's crazy. But you have also earned yourself lavatory cleaning duties until you graduate. Ho 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 ho! The toilet. The toilet. Yes. Ew! True enough of that in the office. No, Apollo does that. Oh, what's going on? What's going on? What? No way, man! I totally object! Robin? I can't believe I fell for the professor's silver-tongued lies. Why, you... How dare you talk about your teacher like that? I'm not listening to you anymore, man! No way, no how! Would you like me to throw you on the ground? Now, I have a confession to make. You know those two statues that were on stage? I didn't make them all by myself! Statues on stage? Well, it's, a, it's gotten a little goofy here all of a sudden. I was able to finish one of them, but the last bell rang before I had time for the other one. So I asked Professor Means to make it for me. Okay, and you're telling the truth now, right? You're not making this crap up. Hmm. Yeah, a little bit. Hmm. <laughs> It's not gonna be that simple though, right? Oh, jeez. The professor told me I'll take care of it. I thought my parents would let me be an artist if I said I'd made both statues myself. Oh, I'm so, so sorry for not telling the truth. Oh. Well, it wasn't relevant back then, so there was no need for you to. Quick, somebody get this juvenile delinquent out of my sight. Simon, your head honcho among the delinquents. Do something. Are you serious? Wow. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Not interested. But if you want a class in swordsmanship, I'm your man. Of course, only real blades will do. Wow. No swords at school. All weapons will be confiscated. <laughs> jeez. <laughs> wow. It would seem like Stono seeks a showdown, Professor. In which case, you would do well to draw your staff quick as lightning. Okay, who are you going to cheer for? Very well, then I will just have to prove my innocence myself. The real lessons begin in second period. Prepare to be served, old school style. What is that? Oh, never mind. Your testimony, please. Oh, jeez. Wow. It always goes like this, doesn't it? They make themselves up a new animation? That goes with their second testimony. Just like that rap guy. Now pay attention, Robin took over half a day to complete one statue. I, however, finished most of the other statues between... Statue between 7 and 8.30 p.m. The defendant Juniper saw the two statues with her own eyes at 8.30 p.m. Completing a statue so quickly meant I could not leave the stage for a single second. How could I have possibly had the time to go with the art room and commit murder? Well, was anybody else there? Ugh. You could have gone away for five minutes to go plunge the all. You're saying the defendant saw the finished statues. Precisely. She said so herself at the detention center yesterday. Her defense team was there and heard her say so too. Don't try to deny it now. Oh, that evening I went back to my dressing room to get something I'd forgotten there. Hmm. Well, sucks to be us. All oh, right, the professor was there when that matter came up. Well, still, like, you couldn't lie about it just because he wasn't there. Uh, before I address the professor's charges, I have a question for Robin. How hard would it be to complete a statue like that in one and a half hours? It would probably take me at least twice as long. She loves them four-letter words, don't she? So, personally, I think it would be incredibly difficult to finish in that short of time. That didn't exactly help our case. 
but he won't get off that easy. He's bound to stumble over his own slippery means. <laughs> Gross. Gross examination. Here we go. <laughs> Now pay attention, Robin took over half a day to complete one statue. Well, different strokes for different folks here. Miss Newman took over half a day. Can you please be a little more precise than that? Ah, uh, <laughs> okay, what a wonderful question. She was having quite a tough time, you see. Prosecutor Gavin's statue alone took her from the morning, hours into the evening. Well, it is a rather large statue after all. Don't be silly. It merely exposes the difference between student and teacher. Well, I, however, finished most of the other statue between 7 and 8.30. Well, most of the other statue, not all of it. Most of the other statue? What exactly does that mean? <laughs> Robin created the basic outline of Mr. Wright's statue before the last bell rang. I, in turn, completed the rest of it. Well, damn. I see. In academics, as well as art, learning the basins is a... Basins? <laughs> sure. In short, you skipped the most important part of the statue making, didn't you? I believe I did, but... <laughs> I love that one frame of the chalk just before it hits you in between the eyes. It is the practical applications built upon the basics that take so much time. Professors such as I mastered the basics a long, long time ago. <laughs> Unlike Miss Fancy Pants here, who lacks all loyally fundamentals. Oh, quiet, you. Now do you understand, I did not leave that stage until I was done. Oh my. Well, Miss Sykes, you well, Miss Sykes, do you accept the witness's claim? Not on your life, Buster. <laughs> no, no, I don't. I know there's more to this, and I won't stop until the truth comes out. The more you struggle, the more you sink, like so much legal quicksand, so to speak. I used the world's ultimate technique to complete the statue by Ultimate Technique? What the hell are you? Are you the Goku of statue making? The defendant Juniper saw the two statues. Well, that kind of just went right back to the. Huh, that's weird. That, like, didn't. Well. Okay, uh, we'll go back to that in a second. Maybe our client only thought she saw the statues. No, I don't know. Ah, she would have said. A pity for you, but we've already confirmed it with the accused. She's on record as having seen both statues. Yeah, that's true. Just thought I'd give it a shot. Well, yeah. <laughs> I have the ultimate in courtroom techniques. It is absolutely airtight. I will bury you. This will be your final resting place, along with all who believed in you. Is there no way to get to this guy? Mm -hmm. You better pay attention. Pay very close attention. Completing a statue so quickly meant I could not leave the stage for a single second. Well, I'm, I'm just, I feel like at some point he had to go to the art room to get something for the statue. That's probably what we're going with here. In the legal world, your body is your capital. The early bird gets the worm. That's why I get to bed at 9 p.m. each and every night. And that's why I was working as fast as I could. I didn't want to miss my bedtime. Well, you sweet little cinnamon bun, you. Well, ready to concede that I never left the stage? He's just a little too excited about the fact that he's never left the stage. No. I don't. I know there's more to this, and I won't stop till the truth comes out. I'd be careful, Athena, if you don't have anything. It's probably best to just grin and bear it for now until you find something to nail him with. But, but, Arg! But, Arg! When will you cease this nonsense? I am quite busy today, as I was the night of the crime. Well, okay, um... How could I have possibly had time to go to the art room and commit murder? Let's find out then, shall we? Yeah, but you could have taken a short break or something. <laughs> nope. Preposterous. I chalk at your accusation. I didn't even have ten minutes to spare. Not even five for a visit to the lavatory. Let me ask you, your honor. Do you find anything wrong with my claim? You know, in the bathroom! So far, it appears that your statue making was quite a difficult chore. And I see nothing that could overturn your claim that you never left the stage. Hmm. But the order was only a few steps away. 
that's the plan. I don't know what you think of this pressing him like crazy. <laughs> that's all I can think of, too. We'll just have to seek out a hole to exploit. So it's the voice analysis, and... I... Whoa, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, my bad. <laughs> I was trying to look at the diagram, but... Uh, okay, my bad. Oops. And I really tried hard that time. Sorry, Athena, no you didn't. That was my... Where was that statement where it gave me the thing to do? Well, there were two of them, actually. I think it was... Yeah, there was this one. Well, let me... Hang on a second, though. Okay, yeah. Um, let me just get back to that. There's something weird about this. Can accept it. I'm not sure what that's gonna lead to, but I've tried everything, but I still can't prove anything. Here's the thing that's weird about it, though. Like, he was right there, close to the art room. It seems like maybe he would have heard something if the murder would have had to happen in that time while he was there. I th well, maybe it could have happened, like, between 6 and 7, but I couldn't hear you say it louder this time. I can see that Professor Means never left the stage. Gahaha, that's right. But what took you so long? I was there at the stage the entire time. I couldn't possibly have committed that crime. I'm not gonna give up here. Never gonna give this up. I'm afraid I have to side with the witness, Miss Sykes. And unless you have any further objections, I'll have to put this issue to rest. I think this is where Apollo come. Oh no. You got this, Athena? Not yet. The defense still has an objection. Athena, you thought of something? <laughs> well, as I said, not yet. Oh, <laughs> so it's time for legal smoke and mirrors. Force your biggest smile. I have to turn the case upside down. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, God. Was she not killed in the art room? Is that what's happening here? Because we already... <laughs> Got confused about where she killed the first time. Or where she got killed the first time, I don't know. Instead of focusing on whether Professor Means could have gone to the art room, I should focus on how he could commit murder without going there. It seems our young lady has a real bona fide idea. Well, you better believe it. Well, it's your bona fide idea, I'm just figuring it out. Let's use any means possible to distract her. See if she can think while I cast these stones. Oh, yeah, that's right. Thank you, thank you, Professor Blackwell. Prosecutor, my bad. Sykes Dono, if I hear one word of your usual jibber jabber, I shall have your head. The murder occurred in the art room, yet the witness was on the stage. How do you propose to fill the vast gap between these two key facts? If I accept the premise that the professor was on the stage the entire time, the only other answer is that we got something else wrong. Wait, that's it. Again! Every last one of us made a huge mistake. We were totally wrong about the crime scene. Oh, man. I think this might be the first time they've done this. Professor Reed, like, had you be wrong about where a person was killed two times in a row? Oh, man. Ridiculous. The defense has become utterly incoherent. No, I'm, I'm just getting there. Just give me a minute. No, it's just the murder wasn't committed where we thought it was. <laughs> Continue, Sykes, don't know. Oh. Okay, the murder was actually committed here. He just pointed right at it. I mean... The greatest riddle of this case has been how the body was moved from the art room. But if the murder occurred on the stage, that means the body was never moved at all. It was just hidden, maybe? Because there was a bunch of people out there just before the mock trial, and nobody saw it. He must have hidden it somewhere. Maybe it was just hidden in the art room, then. Silly girl, when the body was found, there wasn't a drop of blood on the stage floor. Surely there would have been some blood if that's where the murder was committed. There wasn't any blood on the stage, really. But there was something on stage at the time of the murder that's now bloodstained. Da-da-da! Da-da! Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, hang on. Might be the arrow. 
Because the arrow was, the all wasn't on the stage, but the arrow was, right? Wasn't it? Or am I getting my shit confused again? Professor means maybe this piece of evidence will get rid of that glib attitude of yours. Mm, I need a drink of water. Jeez. My guy's sitting right here. Huh. What's wrong? Cat got your tongue. Cat got your Cletus. Got your, got your Cletus. Oh. Okay, my bad. It was the all. Shit. Okay. <laughs> Boom. There we go. Oh, hang on a second, though. Oh, it's too late. There's something else, too. Oh, it was like right when I presented it to you. This crossed my mind. School banner has blood on it. I was too hung up on the idea that the blood was there because the school banner was used to move the body down. Hmm. No blood would have gotten on the floor if this were under the victim when she was killed. Oh my, that's quite a compelling theory. Silence. <laughs> Not so fast. Oh man, did I just piss him off? <laughs> my theory makes perfect sense. That was a pathetic attempt. You must put every inch of your body into your attacks. Every inch. The autopsy states the cause of death was loss of blood. Yet only a trace amount was found upon that banner. Where did the rest go? Blood getting on there when the body was moved by wire. Makes more sense than not. That's what I was thinking, though. Unless... Oh, fuck me. Fuck me! I think I know what happened. I'm wasting the old new recommendation of the old bigger to get in. No, dude, I just figured it out, dude. He used the freaking Gavener's banner. And that's why he burned it! <laughs> 